So guys, uterus, the next organ of female reproductive system we are going to study is the uterus. As I, as I have written down these points, uterus, what is uterus? A child-bearing organ. It is hollow, thick and firm. Now see, this is a muscular bag actually. It is hollow, but the, the muscle wa muscular wall of it is thick. But not only thick, it's a, also firm. So you know, if we can feel it, by manual in per vaginal examination so these are the dimensions of the uterus i have written down 7.5 centimeter uterus is long 5 centimeter wide and 2.5 centimeter thick at, at its body so let's draw out the uterus so here is the uterus these are the philippine tubes i just drew philippine tubes and here is the body of uterus here constricting into its cervix cervix just below turning you know inside the vagina this is the vagina cervix and the uterus now I'm actually trying to draw the sagittal section so let me draw in in the structure so now it is evident that it's actually a muscular bag. Here is the cervix, the vagina, the pathway. Now the Philippine tubes, just to add more reality to it. Here are the Philippine tubes going in. Not gonna draw Philippine tubes anymore. So this is the uterus. Now quickly we will do the parts of the uterus. So the part part of the uterus above the Philippine tubes. You know above the fallopian tubes right here this part is actually called the fundus of the body it is actually a very small part as compared to the body the body from the fallopian tubes till this constriction here you see this constriction here externally and internally as well so this part this part is actually the body of the uterus now body of the uterus makes two third of the uterus whereas below that after the constriction till the last part of the uterus which is inside the vagina we have the cervix cervix of the uterus each part we are going to study individually fund us very small just a part above the fallopian tube no clinical importance Actually, its posterior wall is the fundus of the posterior wall of the fundus is actually site of uh, um, you know in, uh, implantation of the embryo. Now, this is not the common site because the commonest site of the implantation of embryo is actually the posterior wall of the body. So these two sites are the you know common sites of um, implantation of embryo, but the posterior wall of body being the more common. So the, we draw the uterus. Uh, the cervix of the uterus and vagina. I told you about the part, fundus, body and cervix. Each part we are going to discuss individually. So let's start with the body. The body has two surfaces and two borders. You can see these borders. These both are called the lateral borders of the, the body of the uterus. So these are the lateral borders. Whereas there are anterior and posterior surfaces, which I cannot show here because this is two dimensional diagram. So let's talk about the fundus and body. So individually, if we want to talk about the fundus and body, we have to reimagine this diagram. Here is the symphysis pubis. From the start, I'm making symphysis pubis. Here is the sacrum, the fourth and fifth vertebra, then there are coccyx. Here we are going to add now the viscera. Here is the urinary bladder. But beside urinary bladder, we have the vagina. Into the vagina projecting is the uterus going above the urinary bladder. Behind the vagina, on this side, we will have the rectum with its ampulla. This is the ampulla of the rectum. I drew this diagram to actually show you the peritoneal relations. You see peritoneal, uh, peritoneum from abdomen is coming 
on the posterior wall with the sigmoid colon above rectum being intraperitoneal sorry retro oh sorry intraperitoneal yes and here upper part one third of rectum is actually covered by peritoneum covers it completely then only anterior part of the rectum the peritoneal reflect back on posterior fornix of vagina covers the uterus reflects back into this little space and goes back up this is actually the peritoneum moving oh sorry uh, placement in the uh, body pelvis this is actually the pouch of douglas this space this is a pouch of douglas whereas this pouch is the utero vesicle pouch the reason i show showed you about the peritoneum is to understand which parts of the uterus are covered by peritoneum as you can see this is the body of uterus just like here now this is the posterior surface of the uterus body of uterus this is the anterior surface so both posterior and anterior surface are covered by peritoneum as well fundus is also covered by peritoneum vagina on upper part covered by peritoneum so the anterior and posterior border of the uterus are covered by peritoneum fundus is covered by peritoneum now let's talk about the lateral borders of the body of the uterus so now we are going to cut in this section this section we are going to cut the uterus so let's draw the diagram here this is the uterus lateral border uh, lateral surface as we can see here will be the lateral border on the superior here you see with there is a this uterine tube right so here is the uterine tube but and through the uterine tube we know the broad ligament of uterus broad ligament of uterus here two layers of broad ligament of uterus we know that broad ligament of uterus is attached on lateral border of the uterus right right here so i'm going to show it here this is the broad ligament of uterus in between there will be the parametrium two important things we discussed before one thing a structure called the round ligament of ovary actually arises from here goes and goes attached with the ovary not going to draw the ovary at the same time here is another structure round ligament of uterus which arises from here and also run in the broad ligament of uterus this round ligament of the uterus actually goes through the deep inguinal ring exits through superficial inguinal ring goes through the you know the uh, inguinal canal superficial inguinal ring exits through it and then it moves interior to the symphysis pubis i drawing a symphysis pubis here here it divide into projections which meet with the projection of the opposite ends broad ligament of uterus which would arise from here and go all the way the reason i told you this is to show you the lateral border so now we have seen four structures attaching on the lateral border of the uterus one the round ligament of ovary second the round ligament of the uterus number three the round broad ligament of uterus and fallopian tube so here's the fallopian tube let's consider this anterior portion posterior portion so inferior anteriorly it will be the round ligament of the uterus well and mm, inferior posteriorly would be the round ligament of ovary so four structures of the lateral surface are here uterine tube actually uterine tube round ligament of uterus round ligament of ovary and the broad ligament of uterus this was the lateral border of the uterus so the part remaining now is the cervix we have to do the cervix as well I so guys cervix i drew out the cervix for you here this is the part you know upper part this part the body of the uterus this is the continuation of body of uterus then the outer constriction here let me use this the outer constriction and the inner constriction which marks the boundary between the body of uterus and the cervix so 
the cervix start from here it goes down it has a lumen which is you know narrow on both ends but wider in the middle the lumen has these folds which are called arbor vitae uteri and then the canal ends in the vagina the cervix ends in the vagina now where it, the cervix enters on the anterior wall of the vagina so that's why the post the space posterior to cervix is greater as compared to anterior <clears throat> So what is this internal loss, external loss and isthmus? The outer constriction of the boundary between the body of the uterus and cervix is called the isthmus. Whereas internally in the lumen the boundary is called internal os. The boundary or the outer lumen of the uterus that is of cervix into the vagina is called the external os. This canal, this uh, canal of the cervix is actually 2.5 cm long and it, it is fusiform in shape the cervix is less more mobile than the body so the function of these arbor vitae uteri is that these mucosal folds actually interdigitate interdigitate that is that they close and and actually close the lumen i haven't closed the lumen here just to show you that the lumen is wider in the middle as compared to the two ends so this was about the cervix now external os external os has a very important feature in nulliparous women we talked about nulliparous women before right so in nulliparous paris women which have never had a child before their external os is actually circular see this circular like this whereas in multiparous women the women which have had multiple childs has a lumen bit like this it has anterior and posterior lips so a lumen like this so the lumen gets the external os actually gets anterior and posterior lips which are attached with the vaginal wall. So this is the difference of external os between nulliparous women and multiparous women. This was about the uterus, actually its parts and we talked about the parts individually, right? The fundus, body, cervix. The peritoneal relations we also talked about. The pouch of relation of the uterus with pouch of Douglas. The pouch of Douglas is actually posterior to uterus. It's parried the actually the anterior boundary of the pouch of Douglas, this peritoneum layer right here, anterior boundary of pouch of Douglas is formed by the posterior wall of body of uterus, whereas the posterior boundary of uterophysical pouch is formed by the anterior body, uh, surface of the body of uterus. We the another peritoneal important peritoneal relation is this broad ligament of uterus, which is which is attached on the lateral wall of the uterus. We talked about two ligaments. The anterior inferiorly was the round ligament of uterus and, and um, inferior posteriorly was the round ligament of ovary, which both are actually fibromuscular cords. These the actual supports of the uterus include not these ligaments or peritoneal folds, but actually the levator ni. The levator ni is actually a muscle which comes like this. On the both sides, I will give a lecture of about levator ni sometime later. Actually, this muscle forms a pelvic diaphragm. It actually supports the vagina and indirectly supporting the uterus. Now we are going to talk about the angles and uh, you know the angulations of the uh, uterus with the vagina in the next video. As far as the angulations are concerned, let's suppose this is the pubic symphysis. I am drawing up bit bigger here this is for secular vertebra second third fourth fifth and then we get the coccyx actually what i'm trying to show you here i'm not going to dry draw the bladder or the rectum just the vagina so this is actually the horizontal axis right the of the pelvic outlet or the horizontal axis of the body the vagina is actually the way it is present is it extends 
posteriorly and upward with bigger posterior border and smaller anterior border why because anteriorly we get the uterus so here it is actually forming an angle as you can see if we think about it if we see in detail the long axis of vagina actually forms almost 90 degree angle with the long axis of uterus this is actually 90 degree angle and this is called the ant version let me write that down the ant version of the uterus this helps let me draw the bladder here this helps the uterus to rest on the bladder another important angle is also present here you see here suppose is the boundary of the body with the cervix here there is also another angulation let me draw that with a blue pen another angulation and hence the horizontal axis horizontal axis of the body of uterus is actually making angle with horizontal axis of cervix of uterus and this angle is actually 125 degree and this is called the ant flexion of uterus ant flexion of uterus so what is ant version ant version is an 90 degree angle between the long axis of the vagina with the long axis of the uterus whereas ant flexion is angle 125 degree between the long axis of cervix and long axis of the body of the uterus these two were important angles whereas there is another important angle called the dextral rotation we know the cervix uh, the body of the uterus is actually in midline but actually the body of uterus is little bit deviated to the right that is called the dextral rotation of the uterus another term a very important term called retroversion this means that the vagina right here i draw it, and the uh, cervix entering like this but instead of going anteriorly the body of uterus reflect back actually deviates back into the pouch of Douglas we know posteriorly the pouch of Douglas is present right so the body of uterus actually rests in the pouch of Douglas and this is actually called the retroversion we can see here the long axis of vagina versus the long axis of uterus actually it is opposite as compared to here so these are the angulations related of the ovary the importance of ant version and ant flexion is as we can see here the, the uh, uterus the body of uterus is actually resting on the bladder so if there is intra abdominal pressure rise which pushes pushes the uterus down it doesn't cause prolapse of the uterus and the uterus actually puts the pressure back on bladder as a result the uterus stays where it is supposed to be so this was the angulation of the uterus